In this video, we're going to be looking at form control. It's um, it's a pretty interesting one. I think it may be one of those potentially less interesting, or at least less, I don't know, sexy of the components. But what web page doesn't or isn't a form in some way? And so for the for those of us that are making forms for some company or for ourselves or whatever it may be, never overlook a library's ability to make forms easier for you. So obviously we're going to be looking at the docs. And then we have a couple code examples at the very tail end of this. So let's get to the docs and see what they have to tell us. So form control provides context such as is invalid, is disabled, and is required to form elements. And it follows the WAI specifications for forms. We're not going to click on that, but feel free to and just read up on it if you so desire. We have the imports coming in here, form control, form label, form error message, and form helper text. So we have, you know, we kind of know what labels are, but we're already kind of seeing their tip in their hat to, hey, some things don't go your way. And hey, sometimes users need a little bit more info. So let's check this out. The first example, we have a form control. We have an ID on here of email. Cool. And then we have the form label, which is email address corresponding to this right here. We have the input, which is just a, as you could see, well, maybe not because the way I edit this, but it's another component we're going to be learning about coming up where you could just slap some information in here. And then we have the form helper text. We'll never share your email. We promise. And if we do, we're very sorry. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, right? And so this is a, just a very easy and nice way to encapsulate part of your form and keep it all nice looking and, you know, make it stand out to the user and then give them some extra guidance here at the bottom with the helper text on what it is they may need to provide or keep in mind as they're filling this out. So it's not just for your typical input where you could type as well. We have sample usage for radio or checkbox group. We have, uh, I guess they like Naruto. I never got into it. I never watched it, but um, I do enjoy the memes. And so select only if you're a fan. I don't know what really any of these mean, but if we look at the code here, we could say the form control as field set. We have the form label here as a legend and it's the favorite Naruto character. So this as right here is telling Shakur to say, hey, I want this form label to be something else other than originally intended, which is fine. So just keep that in mind as you see as. At any point, it seems with most things in Chakra, you could tell it to be something else, because I think at the end of the day, everything is just a box in a glorified div. So we have here a radio group, and then we have the H stack in here for the horizontal stack to give it this nice little spacing here. And then we have all the values of the radio buttons here and then we have some text at the bottom as we could see select only if you're a fan here so for all this right here i think this is a very nice trade-off this is very sleek and as you have your own different component files shocker really helps you in these instances i think it shines to show how neat and concise and small and re also readable for your developers right um, how it could help out with that so making a field required by passing is required props or passing the is required prop. The input has uh, already required set to true and the form label will show a red asterisk right here. Now you may, you may need some other kind of controls to prevent them from going further. Say you disable some kind of navigation or API call unless they get the information. But this red asterisk right here gives it just enough decoration to say, Hey, out of everything, I at least need your first name, right? We could also do stuff with the select as well. So we could see we have this form control and ID of country. We have the label here, which is a uh, country, which is right up here. And then we have our select and we could do Nigeria, or United Arab Emirates. We could also do this for a number input. We have the increment, decrement, you know, stuff that we will be seeing in just a, you know, a few videos down the road here. But what we're seeing is you're going to have a form control, a form label, 
I mean, you could have the form helper text as well, but then you pretty much just kind of slap any other kind of form-like information in here, and it packages it up really, really nicely for you. So you could come in here and, you know, go up, go down, maybe need 14 of something, 14 pizzas. I don't know. That's a lot of pizzas. Hopefully you have some friends coming over. And it says usage with form libraries. Form libraries like Formic make it so easy to manage state and validation. I guess they really like Formic. I've never heard of this before, so I can't say yes or no about why certain forms are or are not hard to use or work with when it comes to state. But if that's something you want to look at, let me know about, leave in the comments, help others out with, feel free to. I just can't really say much about this because I try to only focus on the the core aspects of Chakra and not really any kind of libraries that even these developers may like. And so they have some improvements here from version one. Feel free to read this. I imagine most of y'all will be seeing this for the first time. So you may be not coming from version one, but if you are, feel free to come to the docs here and check this on out. It may provide useful information to you. But once again, I think this is more, um, you know, not going to be the case, at least for these viewers here. And then we have the props like we do in every single component here. Make sure you check these out. Look at them. You may be sending in a value you think should work, but really um, you're maybe just naming the prop wrong, which is what I do frequently. So this is enough explanation. Let's get to the hands-on stuff and let's do some coding. In this first example, what we're going to do is just make a very small form control and it'll be more centered around just capturing email. We see right here that with just this small amount, we have this form control which is wrapping everything. We're giving it an ID of email, and we're making that this is required. So as you go on, you go through, you change pages, enter information, stuff like that. You have to enter information in here. And so that's what this argument passing through, which is set to true right now, is doing. By default, this is true. And so we have this email address here, which is this form label right here and the label is important that it is being paired in here easily for you with the input so that way if you have some kind of screen reader or something else looking for some kind of semantic connection it is doing that for you and also which is really cool as well is that sometimes you will have email address but other times you'll have in some business flows some kind of action or information you want them to take or put in there but sometimes the way information is named uh, especially by business, you may have one or two or three products that are very closely named. So this helper text down here, which is just for the LOLs right now, you could use this to guide your user to be like, okay, so this is my, you know, product information. Well, which one of the products are they talking about? And you could have some kind of helper text down here that describes what that product is going to be and even give them a small example of you know what it may look like and so in the next example since form control is not that big of a component let's make some weird pizza company form because i've worked at a lot of pizza places and just have a lot of fun with that all right so let's get to making that weird pizza company form once again this is going to be use a we're going to be using a variety of components here not just the form control but a bunch of other ones and so let's get to making that
So we have, I'm just going to leave this right here. So I'm to get the peas. Yeah. So what we have here is a yummy pizza form. There's actually a place in town where I live where you can't order pizza. You just sign up to get on a wait list. And then you get an email saying they could order pizza that evening. So if you went out and bought a bunch of steak or you're going somewhere else and you get that email, looks like y'all are staying in and getting that pizza. The good thing is I heard it tastes really good, but that's really freaking weird. So we have the box. We have the background color blue 50, which is this thing right here. We have the text coming in, sign up for yummy pizza up here. Now for the form controls here, we have a name and we have an email address. The IDs are updated accordingly here. And we have is required for both of them. We also see that the red asterisk is up there as well. And we have the helper text, as we've talked about before, to help guide the customer of, you know, what they need to put in here. And when we have, we will use this for your invite. They know then once they put in their email address that there will be an invite and it will be their name. That they'll be looking for their name and not some like weird code or you know, some something else that you may send them. So this is setting the expectations right here. And this is all wrapped in a simple grid. I could have done this with another layout, however I wanted to choose. But once again, Shocker gives you a lot of options here. And then I have these kind of boxes as these makeshift spaces between these two inputs here, or these two form controls. Then at the bottom here, I have a center, which is centering this obviously. And I have sign up to get the P's and maybe an intern made this maybe i am the intern you click this nothing happens but in theory you would sign up and get a newsletter or some kind of confirmation saying that you're going to get an update of when you get your pizza in this case it's free so this is my second example for the fun form controls if you like this like share subscribe i love making content and i'll see y'all in the next video